Hey guys, welcome to a brand new video. Told you, second video of the day. We're going to be doing Premier League predictions, bringing in the football content into the channel. Obviously, everybody talks about the Premier League. The Premier League is one of, if not the biggest league in football ever. They have some of the most historic and iconic clubs, such as Liverpool, Manchester United, Chelsea, the list goes on. Today, we're going to try and predict the Premier League of 2022-2023 season. And then we're going to look back at the end at the end of the season on this video and see how well we do. I'm probably going to make an absolute fool of myself. <laughs> In 20th place, we have... Bournemouth. Bournemouth are a yo-yo club. I believe that they're going to be a yo-yo club for a while. Um, they have a lot of decent players like Dominic Slanky, but, for example, but they aren't Premier League quality. They are too good for the championship, but they're not good enough for the Premier League. What they need to do, in my opinion, to stay up is to actually sell some of their well-named players and use that money to rebuild the team in say like when they get relegated to the championship i believe that's what they should do but right now they don't have the funds they don't have the en uh, enough talent and depth in their squad to stay up so i believe in 20th place will be Bournemouth. In 19th place, I have placed Leeds United. I know it's a bit of a shock that I've made them so low, but with the departure of Rafinha going to Barcelona and also Kelvin Phillips going to, um, going to Manchester City, they are two big names unless they do some decent transfer, um, which I don't, be I don't believe they have. Honestly, I haven't really heard much about Leeds United's transfer window. Um, I actually have transfer market up here. They they have signed people like Brendan Aronson, Luis Sinestera. Sorry, I pronounced that wrong. Uh, Tyler Adams, Mark Roker, Rams, uh, Rasmus Christensen. But honestly, none of these players are as decent quality like Rafinha and Kevin Phillips in my opinion a couple of the names I've not actually heard of before um and I don't think they're going to be able to survive build the team in time for the Premier League which is starting next week and actually survive unless they do a some insane business in uh January I can't see them surviving. In 18th place, I have Southampton. Hi, um, so you can see I'm wearing a different t-shirt uh, in the video that I am here. Uh, so whilst I was editing, I realized that I didn't really give a proper explanation of why I believe that Southampton was going to go down and why they were going to finish 18th. Um, I believe that they're going to finish 18th is because they the business that they have done has not been very impactful into their squad and with the likes of Che Adams possibly leaving the club and also um Adam Armstrong not really being Premier League quality he has his moments but he doesn't really have his he doesn't have a consistency and they need to either go in for a striker, a very, very known striker, or something to surprise the Premier League of, this is a big an announcement, this is going to be our new striker. Um, also, with a couple of the departures that they have that they have done, um, it weakens the squad. However, recently, recording now, they have done a couple of decent signings to bring in, which may give them the chance to survive however i am still going to keep them as a relegated side they have pushed it frequently of keeping surviving 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 and i think it's now going to catch up to them and they are going to get relegated in 17th place i have 
Fulham to survive. I believe that Mitro last season, uh, everybody knows about his record-breaking um, top goal scorer last season, and he he absolutely smashed it to the point where he proved that he does not belong in the championship. He proved that he be belongs in the Premier League, and I am going to call that he will score 15 goals this season. Fulham are looking like a decent squad. They did sell Cavalio, which is a bit of a shame. They sold him to Liverpool, um, which is a bit of a shame because it would have been a good young player to uh, build around with having Mitrovic and also Cavalio in the team. However, like I said, they sold him to Liverpool. They'll be able to then use that money to invest into uh, bringing depth into the squad and also maybe a couple of positioning in positions that they need to change. In the 16th place, I have Everton. Now, I have put Everton so low is because last season they did really badly. Um, not only that, but this season they have sold um, Richarlson to Spurs. Now, that will be a big blow. It w really will be because I believe that he was the reason that they survived last season. Um, now they don't have Richarlson. They have to find a new striker. Now, they do have um, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, but I don't see him as a full season striker. He seems to be very injury prone and he'll most likely get injured like he does every season. And yeah, I, I couldn't I could not see him being the big impact in their in their season. So they need to go in for a new striker. If they don't, they may even be lower than sixteenth. But I've got them to just survive because there are teams worse than them. And yeah, I'll, I'll, I'd say 16th place Everton. I have in 15th place Nottingham Forest. Now Nottingham Forest have been doing some hefty business this season. With the likes of Taiwo Awanai. They have the likes of Neko Williams, Omar Richards. And also the big name himself, Jesse Lingard. Now obviously Jesse isn't the prime talent that he was meant to be but uh, we saw it when he went to West Ham that clearly why he wasn't doing so well at Manchester United was he didn't fit the way that Manchester United was playing especially under um uh Ole Gunnar, Ole Gunnar Skullshire. I probably pronounced that wrong um and also, I don't think Eric Ten Hag would e even remotely have him in the starting eleven or even on the bench because the way that Ten Hag plays, um, again, would not fit the way that Lingard plays. Lingard has now gone to a team that I believe that will take the best of his ability and also push him to be the best player he can be. So maybe even he might get an appear maybe an appearance at the World Cup. However, obviously there are better players in his position um, that will most likely be called up. I mean, there's the likes of Mason Mount, there's Phil Foden, the the list goes on. Um, but I believe that Jesse Lingard, Awanai, even Omar Richards, if I mean currently he's injured. But when he comes back, I believe that he's going to be a huge impact. My personal um, excitement will be the combination of O'Brien and Harry Toffolo. I believe that they're going to have an absolutely standout season this season. And that's the reason why I believe that Nottingham Forest will be 15th. In 14th, I have Brentford. Now, Brentford, I w everybody's saying that it's going to be second season syndrome. I don't believe that one second with the departure of Christian Eriksen, I be uh, with the money that they got from Manchester United, or did he go on a free? I don't 100% know, I can't remember, but if they did get money for uh, Eriksen, um, they'll be able to build around the team. They still got Ivan Tony. I mean, he didn't have a standout season last season like everybody thought he was going to, 
but I, I, I see him this season bagging in goals, and I think he got injured last season as well. So, you know, that also hindered him last season. This season, I don't think he'll get any injuries. I could be wrong there, but I'm going to call it. He won't get any injuries. He'll bag in the goals, and he'll be an absolute standout player for uh, Brentford and keep them about 15th. 14th. In the 13th place, I have Wolverhampton Wanderers. Now, Wolves last season, they were in around fighting for the 10th spot. They did end up finishing the season 10th place. Um, but they play boring football. They play boring football, and it's going to catch up with them. Um, their Port- the Portuguese talent that they're bringing in is it, it it's worn off now. Everybody was getting really excited because they were bringing in Portuguese talent, and it was getting really excited. They dominated the championship with that ta- with that tactic. They came into the Premier League and did really well in their first season but i bet they are going to start dropping off they're going to drop off not a lot but they are going to finish 13th in 12th place i have crystal palace so no change from last season they have an exciting little project going off under patrick vieira um with the likes of eze they still got zaha they have um, Gwehi, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Gwehi, they have a lot of young talent that is coming through, and it looks like it's going to be an exciting time, they play some exciting football, I actually watched a couple of games from Crystal Palace last season, and they looked really fun to watch, Um, I could see this helping them to even put, I would honestly have Crystal Palace a little higher, if I didn't believe that some of the teams were not going to do better this season. But yeah, Crystal Palace, 12th place. I think it would be fine for Patrick Vieira. Honestly, uh, he would want to start pushing for Conference League or even Europa League this season. But I don't think that they will make it. In in 11th place, I have Aston Villa. Now, Aston Villa under Steven Gerrard, they have done some absolute signings through last season with the likes of uh, Danny Ings coming in. Um, they brought in um, they brought in Coutinho. That that was a surprise. Coutinho came in, and they now signed him this this transfer window on a permanent deal. Um, Aston Villa, again, just like Crystal Palace, they have a project going on there. Um, I could honestly see them sneaking in to the top, top seven, to be honest. If the likes of Manchester United and whatnot have drop off, you know, you got to think new managers came in and... They, I'll speak about them later, but I could honestly see Aston Villa pushing into the top seven, finishing in a European spot. In 10th place, I have Leicester City. Uh, Leicester haven't really done much business this season, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I could see them dropping off to 10th place, mainly for the fact that they really haven't done much business. Sometimes doing no business is perfectly fine, but... It can hinder you because Leicester see Leicester don't have much depth. That is their problem. They don't have much depth. Like for example, their striking position, they have Jamie Vardy and they have Ian Acho. But other than that, they don't really have someone who is a standard third, a third choice striker. They could play Harvey Barnes or even James Madison at number nine. But then they would have to replace that midfield position or even that wing position present me here hello um i realized that i didn't actually go into detail about properly about why i believe that leicester was going to finish 10th they're going to finish 10th because jamie vardy he's 35 years old they don't have a third choice striker like i said in the video 
and quite frankly, they can't re always rely on Jamie Vardy. That is a problem, and they really should think about going in for a new striker. Also, with a possible departure to, uh, of James Madison to Newcastle, that is again another problem. They need to do business, and they need to do b business before the transfer window ends, or else they're going to be in trouble until January, where they can then possibly start doing business. But maybe that will be too late, maybe it won't be. Who knows? We'll have to see. In ninth place, I actually have Brighton. Brighton are looking promising. Very, very promising. Um, I saw everybody talking about them last season. Everybody talking about them last season. They did finish ninth last season, um, but they could even push it to European. I, I could see them playing Europa League next season. Not this season, but the season after. Um, if they keep going the way that they're going, the direction that the club on and off the pitch are going, they could be even a top six side by two seasons' time. Knocking off one of the usual top six. Personally, I would say probably Manchester United because they're not having a great time at the minute. But like I says, Manchester United, I have a lot to say about them. I'll speak about them in a minute. In 8th place, I am going to say Newcastle are going to finish 8th. Because, well, last season they had the huge, huge Saudi Arabian takeover. Which has brought in a lot of money into the club. All the Newcastle fans are going to be excited about the transfers that they do. Um about what is going to be taking place at St. James's Park. I believe, if I remember correctly, I heard that there was going to be a like a new stadium being built, or it was something like um, they are going to be increasing the stand sizes uh, so they can bring in more fans, which is absolutely awesome. It's a great, th it's a great feel at Newcastle currently. I do have a soft spot for Newcastle United um, because, I don't know, just something about them. They always, it's uh, it's always great to see a team like Newcastle do really well. And again, they're another team that I could see push for the top six. In seventh place, I have Manchester United. What is going on at Manchester United? They have... Honest, they're, they're absolute shambles. With the owners that they have, it's an absolute scary thought for Manchester United to be just dropping off. They have brought in a new manager in Eric Ten Hag who did absolutely fantastic at Ajax. He was the reason that Ajax went on that insane uh, Champions League run a few seasons back. However, now he has came to Manchester United to pretty much a shambles club. It's a legendary status club. Manchester United is. And the way that they're being treated currently by their owners. And how the team is playing. It's horrible. Cristiano Ronaldo even said at the start of the transfer window. That he would like to leave. Because he would like to be playing Champions League football. If someone like Cristiano Ronaldo is saying that they would like to leave not because um, not maybe not because of the state of the club but maybe because of the state that the that they have absolutely terrible owners and it's ruining it it's pretty much rotting from the inside out it is absolute shambles to see Manchester United be in a position where I have to say that I believe that they are going to finish 7th place. I could honestly see Manchester United dropping down to even 10th. Because they don't have a, de they don't have a team that could push for European, for, uh, for a European spot. They've done two signings this season. A team like Manchester United 
who has the likes of Fred and Scott McTominay in midfield, where Cristiano Ronaldo would like to leave. Where they don't re they have a couple of promising youth players like James Garner and even um what's his name? Alanga? Is it Alanga? Um they look promising and they're not even being picked into the team. I know we're in the preseason, but it would be nice to see them getting game time in the Premier League this season if they don't get loaned out or permanently sold. Manchester United have a lot to rebuild, starting off with getting rid of them owners and getting new owners. They need new owners. They have a new manager who I believe is going to do well for the club, try to get the players in a positive mindset and try and push for the, for Champions League this season. But with the state of the club currently, I can't see them finishing higher than 7th place. In 6th place, starting off with Euro Europa League, I, I have put West Ham United. West Ham United, currently, they are... They seem a little... Well, the fans seem a little distracted with the signing of Jesse Lingard going to Nottingham Forest. I know I talk about Nottingham Forest, but I'm a Forest fan. <laughs> I'm going to. Um... But the, the fans seem a little distracted currently. But we're talking about the club. The club are in a high currently. They had a great run in the Conference League last season. To be fair, they should have won it. it either them or Rangers. But neither of them did. Feyenoord ended up winning the Conference League. But West Ham is... Um, they seem to have a good feel moment at the minute. I don't see them dropping off. I actually see them improving this season. With where they finish, they finish 7th place, meaning that they are in the Conference League. But I could... Or they're in Europa League. I can never remember. Um, West Ham just... They're just doing really well. Doing a bit of good bits of business. And strengthening the team. Um, one thing I would say is they need to sign a new striker. Mikel Antonio is starting to age... Like, he's 29, 30 now. Um, so, they need to start investing into a new young striker. Um, and also, he's he seems to be very injury prone recently. So, they need a backup striker anyway. And they could even push into fifth place if, if they signed a new young prolific striker. Um, but, I have them sixth place. Europa League spot. Fifth place, I have Spurs. Now, Spurs have been doing some business. They've brought in Richardson, Basuma, and Jed Spence, and even Ivan Perisic on a free. Um, they have really depth their, their team. Um, they have someone to back up Harry Kane if Harry Kane gets injured, or even Richardson might even fit into that start 11. I don't exactly know where because they don't play with two strikers. But if not, he's going to be an amazing um, piece of business to back up Harry Kane. Maybe even swap them out. Kind of like what Man City does did with um, with De Bruyne and Phil Foden. They usually swap them in and out just to um, just so one of them can be tired, like to rest whilst they're tired. The other one can play whilst he's fresh. Um, and I could see them pushing in to get a Champions League spot. They they do play Champions League this season. Finishing fourth last season. Yeah, they're going to be dropping off to fifth. But they're going to have a really good run in the Champions League. I don't see them winning it. But I have them at fifth place securing another European spot. In fourth place, I have Arsenal. Now, Arsenal have one big sign-in. Gabriel Jesus, he is going to be a game changer for Arsenal. Him, Saka, Odegaard. That is a deadly attack. That is a deadly attack. And I could see uh, that Jesus is going to score 20 goals this season. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I don't see him scoring any less. Saka's probably going to get like 20 assists. 
Odegaard's probably going to get like 14 assists. Like, it, it's such an attacking minded team. Um, Arteta is starting to think very youthful now. He's starting to think very exciting football. I'm, I'm not saying that Arsenal has played boring football, but with the skit, with how tactical the players that he's signing are, it's going to be even more fun. It's going to be fast paced. It's going to be exciting to watch. And them pushing into the Champions League spot is a guarantee. Guaranteed fourth place. In third place, I have Chelsea. Now, Chelsea, they are not... They're not going to be able to compete with the likes of Liverpool and Manchester City. Um, so, I believe that they're going to finish third place this season. Now, I think they're mainly going to be focusing on winning the Champions League and maybe even an FA Cup run this season just to get some trophies under their belt. Last season, they didn't win anything. And... I could see them actually going for it. Last season in the Champions League, they did really well. They got knocked out by Real Madrid um, in amazing fashion. But we're not talking about Real Madrid. We're talking about Chelsea. Um, but I couldn't. I can't see them winning a Premier League. So they would want to go for another trophy. So I believe that they're going to go for the Ch Champions League and maybe the FA Cup. Um, that could make them drop. Possibly down to fourth and uh, Arsenal jump to third. But with the amount of depth and the amount of talent that Chelsea currently have, I could see them being able to make a squad for all three competitions and possibly winning one of the trophies and also keeping that third spot. In second place. Now, everybody has Manchester City to win the Premier League. I don't. I have Liverpool to win the Premier League. Now, everybody's talking about Manchester City signing Haaland for 54.8 million. Um, but I see that Darwin Nunes is going to have a better season. Not by goals. Obviously, Haaland's probably going to convincingly get the golden boot this season. But... I don't think the goals are going to be enough for Manchester City to actually push and get that Premier, uh, another Premier League title under their belt. Obviously, they will want to go for the quadruple, um, but I think their main focus to this season is going to be the Champions League. After all, Manchester City have never won a Champions League, so their main focus will be that. They do have the depth to go for the Premier League, to go for the FA Cup, for, go for the Carabao Cup, but I don't see them doing it. I see Liverpool sneaking in, grabbing that FA, uh, that Premier League, uh, Premier League trophy. I believe that Chelsea are probably going to win the FA Cup, and Man City are going to win the Champions League. Because Haaland, De Bruyne, Phil Foden, the list goes on. The list goes on for Manchester City. You could probably name their entire star on 11 and you could say that that isn't even half of their talent. But with how Liverpool are going currently in the transfer window, they are going to probably win the Pre uh, They are most likely going to win the Premier League. Liverpool will win the Premier League. Manchester City will win the Champions League. I am saying it right here, right now. And if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, that Manchester City win the Premier League, I will buy a Manchester City top. I'll even record this of me going to Manchester. I won't buy it online. I will go to Manchester. I will go to the Etihad. And I will buy a Man City top. That's everything for me, guys. Um, what do you think about my Premier League predictions? Um, if you agree with me, leave a comment down below. If you disagree with me, make sure to tell me where you believe that I'm wrong. Also, make your own Premier League pr uh, pr a table prediction in the comments down below. So I can see what you guys think of how this season is going to go. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
um, if you did make sure to leave a like it really helps a lot with the algorithm on youtube uh if you are new here make sure to subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you know when i upload a new video or even when i go live because i do live stream on here on youtube um and you can come in and say hi and see how trash i am at valorant <laughs> But it's all but the vibes in there are a load of fun. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.